This is the um, the Stumac Kaleli kit, um, solid mahogany, and um, when it's built, um, it will either be an absolute masterpiece or a total disaster. Um, I'm venturing to suggest probably the latter. And that is going to eventually be an ukulele, hopefully. Otherwise it's going to be very, very expensive firewood. Hi folks, um, finally um, finished the, uh, the Stumac ukulele. Um, I'm not really a very effective uh, woodworker. I've put a really embarrassing label in there of my son in his underwear just to embarrass him. Um, this is a really well put together kit. They, the, the parts are really well machined. Um, everything goes together really, really well. A, a word of warning, if you're um, the impatient type like I am and you're not really a woodworker, um, I won't say don't build it, I'll just say that um, you're, you're probably going to have some um, minor hiccups along the way. Um, the only criticism of sort of my effort, well I've got lots of criticisms of my efforts, but one of the main criticisms was I rushed a lot of stages. And one of those stages was probably the most crucial stage of the actual project, I think, and that is when you're putting your frets on your fretboard, they need to be really, really level and um, really well dressed so that you don't get any string buzzes and all that sort of stuff. And I rushed that stage. They also told you, they actually told you in the instructions, do not use a carpenter's hammer unless it's got a very smooth face on it. I was using a very rough hammer. Um, during the, the construction stage of the body, this is probably going to give, you know, fine woodworkers and luthiers um, nightmares for the rest of their lives. I actually, because um, I didn't have a coping saw and because I'm not very good at using a saw, what I did was um, I glued the, um, the top on and uh, the bottom on as they were rough cut to size so there was probably a good centimetre and a half hanging over the edges and then I thought well I'll just file that away. Well, you know, after about about three hours I realised that filing away what was left there was going to be a little bit of an undertaking so then I tried to cut some away and that was splitting the wood at the top and it was looking like I was going to completely destroy the kit so in the end what I did was I went into the garage and my father has a, a bench grinder there so I started grinding away on this uh, um, you know tiny little piece of um, mahogany and it was all going quite well um, I'm thinking oh gee I've got this all worked out and then it um, it ripped a chunk out of the top, and you probably can't see it, but over um, yeah over here there's a, a little crack that um, was the result of that little effort. And then I thought, well maybe that's not the best way to go about it. So next time I build a, a new kalele, um I'll have a coping saw, and I'll actually do it the way they told me to do it. Um, the other thing that um, that went wrong with this construction process um, was quite often I didn't do the dry run on the clamping thing and well how hard can it be to clamp two pieces of wood together well it can be very hard and the neck actually had a bit of a gap because I didn't sand properly as well so um, in the end um, I would I'd, I'd recommend doing it because if you've never done woodworking before it's certainly an enjoyable um, way to get into it and like I said um, I'm saying nothing bad about Stuart McDonald here because the kit itself um, was really, really well put together. Another little trick for um, new players is um, the um, frets that they do give you, um, they give you enough fret wire if you follow the instructions. If you leave a lot of excess thinking, oh there's heaps of wire here, I'm going to have no problems filling up this fretboard. Well, when you get to the last fret, like I did, you've run out of fret wire. So I had to use a little bit of the, um, I think they call it purfling that you put around here on the last fret and um, it didn't concern me too greatly because um, I, this is unexplored territory for me up here on the fretboard and it's probably going to be an unexplored territory for a very long time so um, I didn't have a problem with that. If anyone's interested in the um, the finish, it's basically a type of tongue oil. I got it if you're um Australia um, side person um, at, at uh, Bunnings and I think it's called China Oil and it's basically a um, a, a tongue oil. Um, 
and then I um, I waxed it as well and there's a wax product that goes with that tongue oil and I gave it a wax it's quite a matte finish um, the strings that come with it are abysmal they're really really bad strings um, that's the only criticism I have but um, you know if you're a, a uke player you're going to have um, you know preference for strings anyway and um, I've strung this with Aquila Soprano strings and um, I guess you're already um, wondering what it sounds like so I won't um, you know, hold the suspense any longer. It's not brilliant, uh, but it, it, it plays. Yes, so um, for the purists, um, they probably think, my God, you just destroyed some lovely pieces of mahogany. Um, I would just like to say that um, it was a lot of fun and um, I've got a uke. Um, it's got a bit of personality. Um, I made it, so I still like to play it, even though I can see all the things that went wrong with it. Um, um, I like it, so, and it sort of made me um, think about maybe maybe doing it again at some point in the distant future. Um, having said that, I've also um, just ordered a brand new Zebra Wood Ahana Soprano from Music Go Mike because I still want a ukulele that plays um, better than this one does, but um, you can never have too many ukuleles. So that's it basically. Um, so yeah, um, main thing to think about is fretboard make sure you're very careful putting the frets in because um, that's a, um, a trap for new players and um, yeah that would be about it basically um, that's the main area where you can probably go wrong is with the fretboard so be really careful with that and building the jig um, my jig wasn't very square so that's another thing um, that you have to look out for make sure the jig's um, straight I ended up part way through the construction process having two center lines instead of one so um, I sort of built it in a very sort of uh, the sort of way that an artist would build a an ukulele rather than a, than a luthier um, but I certainly enjoyed the process and um, it's um it's made me think that I'm gonna do it again maybe That's all from me, um, and uh, yep, if you've got any questions or if anyone's got any questions, just drop a comment on here and um, I might be able to help you out, um, get, you know, tell you things not to do when you're building an ukulele. Um, uh, if you're thinking about looking at, you know, the whole process and how it happens, um, there's lots of really good stuff on YouTube, and one um, site that I'd thoroughly recommend is um, Waverly Street Ukuleles. Um, the gentleman that um, builds those ukuleles has put a whole set of um, on uh, on his website of um, how to build an ukulele, and he starts from like a solid block of wood and shows you from start to finish how he does it. Um, it's very informative, and uh, I think he does it as a hobby. But he's got ukes for sale every now and then, and they're very reasonably priced. And um, had there been one there that um, that uh, at the time I was looking for one, I would have certainly purchased one and at some point in the future I'm sure I will anyway but um, yeah take take a look at that because it's really worthwhile and um, yeah have fun and if you decide to build this GMAC kit um, yeah don't be afraid that it's not a good quality kit because it's definitely a great buy. See ya!